Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today we have a Christopher Ward. It's definitely been a while since we featured a new Christopher Ward on the channel. This one isn't super new, but it's one I've definitely had my eye on. Uh, a little bit about the brand. Christopher Ward is, of course, UK-based out of London. And they're an independent brand that kind of grew out of the niche micro brand space into being just a full on independent brand. In terms of the type of watch, of course I'd consider this an everyday watch. Some key common characteristics and design which you're looking for something you can wear every day. You're really just gonna want that versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes. Of course this also would fall under a pilot's watch, uh, which is really just all about legibility and uh, you know clarity uh, at the end of the day. This is their C65. Cranwell Series 2, and these are licensed by the Ministry of Defense and approved by His Majesty's Armed Forces. Um, and this is the second gen C65 Cranwell um, in kind of a precision engineered update of the JLC as well as the IWC 6B346 pilots watches. So, uh, you know, it definitely has a very uh, recognizable iconography in terms of the style and the type very simple uh, which I like and uh, of course it does have that updated twin flag logo which a lot of people were kind of waiting for so now that that's all here this definitely has a lot to offer especially when you consider the fact that these come in at about eleven hundred dollars direct and actually do have chronometer grade movements uh, so these are certified chronometers not just chronometer grade which is great right um, so I definitely like that and I was excited to see that they offer these in 38 millimeter uh, another bonus so there's like a lot that this has going for it that made me want to check it out uh, so I do appreciate uh, the marketing folks over at Christopher Ward for sending this loaner in so I could share it with you guys so with all that said let's go ahead zoom the camera out get this piece in hand and take a closer look okay now very classic layout here guys you can see you got the numerals, you even do have a bit of a sector section there, uh, which helps and you can see that the hour hand lines up with that great. Minute hand lines up, of course, with the outer indexing. And then you do have a little bit of color play within uh, the actual loom application, very reminiscent of some modern IWC pilot watches. And I think that looks really, really cool. It works here. It also works in terms of making it a little bit of a warmer color palette. So you could pair this with something a little earthier, a green uh, nylon strap, brown, you know, various hues there. And I think it's gonna look really great. So whether it be a dark brown leather or a light brown leather, or even like a, a khaki nylon strap. So very, very versatile from that perspective. And then of course the size and everything. So the size is 38 millimeters in diameter, 11.9 millimeters thick. And that is because of that, uh, you know, nicely box domed sapphire crystal with inner AR coating. The bezel is fixed and nicely brushed with a nice lower bevel there. You can see where you're gonna get a nice high polish, which is great. And then you do get also a screw down crown, which is signed and it does have uh, that uh, aluminum additized insert there with the circular. So, I mean, that's, you know, I'm not crazy about it, but I don't hate it. Um, I think it might have, you know, been better, just a little bit more hidden. Maybe you like unscrew the crown and like there was some red in the crown too, but I don't know. I'm just not crazy about it. It doesn't look bad by any means, uh, but for me, it doesn't really add much to it for the additional work that they did to put that there. I think maybe a gold colored ring might've made more sense with the use of the kind of patina there or uh, you know maybe bronze or something like that, a brass uh, color insert might just tie in a little bit better, but that's just me. I mean, that's purely subjective and uh, you know, that's all about my preferences. Uh, getting in to this uh, great case back here, you can see really beautiful in terms of that stamping. Uh, not super, super deep, but definitely nice and 3D. And uh, I really like that, of course, it does have, uh, you know, it's part of it being, uh, you know, mod approved, which I think is really, really cool. So that uh, Ministry of Defense style, you, you know, you do get to add 
uh, some nice, uh, you know, decorative elements to that with that approval, which, you know, I like. And you can even see on the back of the leather, very clean. You know, of course, this is a press model, so it's been around a bit. But that Italian vintage oak leather, right? Very nice 20 millimeter lugs. You get the uh, quick release spring bars, whatnot. So that's all great. And then we get over to the dial, which is matte black. It has everything's printed. There's no date. You're getting Super Luminova Grade X1, which is fantastic. With the screw down crown, you're able to achieve 50 atmospheres or 150 meters of water resistance, 20 millimeter lugs, very universal, very versatile. And then, uh, you know, the leather strap does taper down uh, two millimeters to about 18 millimeters at this signed pin buckle which everything's fully milled, even that finger there. So very clean, uh, not bad at all. I think I would have preferred the uh, the version that was on the bracelet, uh, just because I think that is a standout feature of this watch, uh, especially since they have updated the bracelet. Would have been nice, but I can also understand why they might, in terms of press loaners, want to send out something on the leather strap. Although I didn't see this black strap as an option on the website. So if you want this strap and it's not available, don't yell at me. This is just what they sent me. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So why don't we just go ahead and get this piece on the wrist now? All right, guys, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, it wears really, really well. And uh, if I get my wrist a little too close to the camera, there's gonna be some lens distortion. It's gonna make the watch appear much larger than it actually is. So what I'll do is I'll keep my wrist nice and low so you guys can get a um, you know truer aspect ratio of how this might lay on your own wrist, but I'll tighten up the shot so you guys can actually get some nice details there. And you can see this is really nice, almost a bit too small. And I think that has to do with the fact that they use that little kind of sector circle there um, for the hours. And I like that, and I think it would you know it, it kind of does remind me of let's say a B dial um, Flieger. But with that, typically a Flieger would be larger, right? And I think this in a 40 millimeter would look fantastic because it would fill the space really well. I think on a 38 though, it does tend to crowd the dial slightly, just slightly. And also you can see the sapphire on there, that edge does have a bit of a milkiness to it, which isn't great, not ideal. Um, and it's something that you know you may or may not notice. I definitely kind of do notice it there as I look down at it. Um, it's not something that every sapphire has, but depending on the way that it's cut, unfortunately, sometimes you will see a bit of milkiness. And in this case, uh, I do see a little bit of milkiness around that outer edge. So then you kind of add that, that shrinks the dial down again. And then uh, it, you know it just makes the watch physically appear much smaller. And it's one of those things that is typically a feature on a pilot's watch to help shrink it down, right? And keep things still very legible, um, you know, in a much larger scale um, or not even much larger. I think uh, in this in a 40 millimeter would probably work a lot better. Um, and, you know, it would feel more like a pilot's watch. This feels a bit more like a field watch with a pilot style layout um, and I mean that probably is in part due to the fact that these watches are in a line uh, where they are you know quite versatile and there's kind of a more field watch version of this and a more dive watch version as well but they do have kind of similar silhouettes uh, but with that said you can see it still wears really well definitely gives you more of those everyday vibes this is more kind of everyday field watch with just kind of a pilot's watch aesthetic in my eyes but with that said let's go ahead get it off the wrist set up for some loom shots low light transition and closing thoughts okay let's go ahead into the lights all right check that out so that x grade um, x1 grade loom is fantastic right uh it's nice pale blue very vibrant uh, appears pretty much white in daylight of course there are some that appeared yellow but that was on purpose that wasn't just you know that was tinting it to make it be really a purposeful choice i don't think they really meant it to be 
a patina choice. It was more for relative, uh, relatively related to contrast. But one thing I always like to do is, of course, work in some low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or maybe just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it's nice to see how these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting. You can see transitional lighting, that loom is so bright, it almost looks like it's just clean and uh, you know white or even with a slight blue tint to it, uh, a little bit more modern. It makes you wonder what this thing would look like. I think this would actually look really cool in a white dial variation uh, with black and, uh, and of course that nice mustardy uh, loom there that they have mixed in. I think that would actually look really, really cool. But you can see, uh, you know, in these mixed lighting conditions, still quite legible, whether you're just looking only at the loomed portions or you do have a little bit of light there touching down, you can see it just adds a lot in terms of that legibility. So very, very handsome guys. And this isn't a dive watch, so you know, loomed running seconds hand isn't necessarily a requirement. But uh, I, you know, it's kind of a nice touch if they would have maybe loomed the counterbalance or uh, maybe just the tip of the seconds hand. But it's fine for it not to be. All right. So closing thoughts, guys, on the wrist. Really versatile proportions. You know, it might feel a touch small for a pilot's watch. Uh, you know, it probably would feel a little bit better on that bracelet, I think, uh, in terms of kind of uh, once you add the male end links, it might help elongate the case and make it feel a little bit more proportional. Um, you know, again, it kind of does for me anyway, at least on this strap, it feels more like a field watch with a pilot's aesthetic. In terms of model variants, there are various MOD watches now available, um, you know, on your choice of straps, bracelet. Uh, so definitely check the links in the description for details. I'd say comparably, this would be, you know, very Zen 556-like, um, as well as kind of Hamilton khaki field-esque in a lot of ways. Uh, definitely more premium uh, than the khaki field, or even if you like want to compare it to the Murph, which is a really great looking watch, um, you know, similar uh, aesthetic wise, and I think fills a similar space. Uh, but this is going to be obviously offering you uh, better regulation on the movement, uh, you know, not as well a name and maybe not as cool a story as Interstellar. Um, and then comparing it to, of course, to the 556, which is also a smaller pilot's watch um, in the more kind of modern fleet style uh, but also kind of feels more like an everyday especially on its bracelet uh, but it's gonna be ultimately a little bit more utilitarian where this is gonna be more complex within those kind of light catcher finishings on the case so there's a lot of value here packed in uh, which you know Christopher Ward is really known for so for me guys bottom line while you know many may instead kind of gravitate towards uh you know the more expensive iwc pilot watches this c65 offers a lot of bang per buck you know i'll for me personally i'd still take my spec'd out laco flieger pro for a bit more money um but i could easily see why folks might gravitate more towards this model and i'm tempted to own both like honestly like i think this on bracelet is quite compelling and quite different um and you know again i would probably be more tempted i think if the brand's media team would have sent me a sample on bracelet but with, without that i think uh you know, I'll, I'll be okay. Uh, I do have quite a few pilots watches. Um, I think I'll be all right without this one, but this one has great specs. It's well built. It looks great. Um, and I think, you know, uh, without experiencing the new updated bracelet, I'm sure that also adds a ton of versatility and value within that equation for not much more. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do a like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.